Hi, this is Doug Ward from Tech Britain. We're in the great city that is Manchester. Very, very happy to be here with Professor Alistair Rawlson. Thank you for your time, Alistair. You're welcome. Um, for people who haven't come across yourself, you have a fantastic background. It's inspirational. It needs to be talked about, as far as I'm concerned, a lot more. I know you're very modest, but now you're embarrassing. Can we, uh, can we talk about your background to start with? So I've spent my life teaching computer science at the University of Manchester. I had an awful lot of fun um, teaching enthusiastic youngsters for the last 35 years or so. Uh, but in 2000, I did something that uh, I always really hankered after, which was to take some technology that we'd worked on in the university and spin it out into a company. So from Manchester, we raised some venture capital, we built a technical team, and we sold products around the world. Um, our most uh, impactful product uh, was shipped by Apple as part of their migration from PowerPC to Intel processors in 2005. Um, as part of that transition, they shipped about 20 million copies of our software. And they branded it the most amazing software you'll never see, which pleased me no end. I wish I'd thought of that marketing slogan. So in 2008, uh, we sold the company to IBM, uh, and I came back to the university to uh, get involved in some new stuff and um, start the process all over again. Fantastic. And what, what, was, what are you working on at the moment, and what's happening at Manchester University from a computer science standpoint today? Computer science at Manchester is one of the most exciting places to work in the UK, certainly in, in the UK, probably in Europe. Uh, there's all sorts of exciting things going on. Um, I'm doing some stuff with some very bright students on the, the, the future of uh, deep computer architecture, the way we build uh, computer chips, the way we virtualize them, the way we deliver services on them. But my colleagues are doing even more exciting work. Um, Steve Ferber is well known for his work on uh, building a simulation engine to simulate the human brain. Uh, and there are people doing amazing stuff from bioinformatic systems through to medical um, medical devices uh, through to data, data processing data mining for medical purposes um, and of course in the building that I sit in uh, was the equipment that graphene was discovered uh, on just a few years ago giving Manchester its, its first pair of Nobel prizes for the last few decades very, very proud to be in the city where, that, where that's happened. Me too. In, in terms of uh, Manchester as a tech community, Alistair, what, what, what's your thoughts on where we are today? What I see today is an awful lot of entrepreneurial activity within the city. There's an awful lot of excitement and dedication to doing things in small groups and, and making an impact with technology, particularly technolo mixing technology and the creative industries. Um, where I think we could increase our, our impact and uh, take our game to the next level is try to coordinate those activities a bit more. Um, and getting Manchester recognized both internally and externally as a real center of gravity for this activity uh, in Europe. And uh, in terms of people considering doing a startup in Manchester or perhaps in Manchester thinking about leaving, what, what would you say to that person? I guess that's two questions, isn't it? Why, why would you come to Manchester to do a startup? And if you were in Manchester, why would you not go somewhere else? From my own experience, I think Manchester is simply the, uh, the best place on the planet to start and grow up uh, a technical team. The, uh, the, the, hidden, the, the, the secret advantage, the unfair advantage that Manchester has is its education system. We have the largest uh, higher education campus in Europe on Oxford Road. We're producing hundreds of graduates every year in technology and sciences. And by and large, many of them have to go elsewhere to find jobs. Because of the large number of students, Manchester has an incredibly vibrant um, lifestyle scene, I suppose you'd call it, the clubs and the pubs and the entertainment and the ability to get out of Manchester and do exciting things at the weekends. Um, so in terms of, of general uh, quality of life, it's, a, it, it's absolutely unrivaled. And 
there are lots and lots of students who would love to find a job here in Manchester doing something fulfilling. So I think the biggest asset that Manchester has is the ability to put teams together quickly from new graduates and recent graduates to give them something to stay in Manchester for. And that's what I would tell entrepreneurs who were even contemplating moving away from Manchester. Fantastic. In, in terms of your experience with Transitive, just can you talk us through that experience of going from the idea to you, you, you suddenly sat with IBM? I mean, broad strokes, I mean, I know you could probably speak about that and we could for, for a long time, but what, what is that experience when you look back on reflection? Looking back on it, it's, it's really hard to pick out a particular high spot or low spot because the emotional roller coaster was just unbelievable. You, you would start every day not knowing what fate would throw at you. And it really was eight years, no, 10 years of, of highs and lows, of setbacks and, and incredible adrenaline rushes. Um, I, it was just an experience that I'll remember for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life. And, and so will all the other people who were involved in it. And the, for me, the really exciting thing about it is, is seeing how the people, how the other people who were involved uh, are going on and doing amazing things in their careers, some in startups, some in established organizations, but all of them doing really, really staggering technical work. Just, just to end with Alistair, I'd like to ask in terms of Manchester's computing history and also with us moving forward in terms of on a broad spectrum of, from the UK standpoint, you look at Brazil, Russia, India, China, moving quite a startling speed. Um, what, what do you think the UK needs to do to, to stay in front or to be able to compete globally 10 years from now? That is, I think, a really hard question. But I guess I guess the first thing we need to do is to, is to stop beating ourselves up. We are damned good at it. We are already damned good at it. And when we hear people, when we hear people who should know better saying that Manchester needs to up its game, Manchester needs to move to the next gear, Manchester needs to emulate Silicon Roundabout or, or any of these other places, South Korea or anywhere else, we're not doing ourselves a favor. We have amazing assets here in Manchester already. We have amazing people here in Manchester already. We have people who are very quietly changing the way that we live, we work, we play already in Manchester. So we should recognize that, feel very proud of what we've got, and think about the next generation as just building on that. I don't think, I don't think we need to do anything radical I think we need to recognize what we're already doing, celebrate it, and just keep it up. And if anybody wants to get in touch, Alistair, would it be okay for people to get in touch? Absolutely. I'm, I, I, I'm really lucky I have this unusual name. So if you can Google Alistair Rawsthorne, you'll find me top hit. And I'm always pleased when people reach out and uh, contact me. Uh, I love talking about exciting ideas with, uh, with anybody who gets in contact. Fantastic. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for your time. Okay. Cheers. Great. Thank you.